Hi there, folks. This is Ken Maynard and Tarzan. <laughs> Inviting you to join us here in the tack room of the Diamond K Ranch for another exciting tale from the Diamond K. You know, folks, I sure enjoy these little visits we have together. It's nice to get acquainted with all of you. The tack room door is always open, so why don't you spend the next 15 minutes here with us? I've got a mighty exciting story today called The Lake of Gold. Thank you, Ken. From the tack room of Ken Maynard's Diamond K Ranch, we're bringing you transcribed stories of adventure. Stories of circus life, fascinating tales of the Old West where cowboys still follow the cattle trails. Stories of rodeos and parades, colorful legends of the Red Man, hidden gold and buried treasure. The exciting tales from the Diamond K are told by Hollywood's champion of Western stars, internationally famous Ken Maynard. Now while Ken's getting ready to spin his newest Wild West yarn, here's something to think about, buckaroos. Do you know what every cowboy's favorite pastime is? Well, after the chores are done, whether it's watering the horses or pitching hay or rounding up the cattle, the boys just kind of drift together to chat a bit. And first thing you know, one of them is telling a story. And that's why we think you'll get a big kick out of having a set of real Western stories to hear any time you have your chores done. Now, I'm talking about the exciting record album of Ken Maynard Wild West Stories. It's a beautiful album in color with two of Ken's favorite stories inside on big, Eight-inch, unbreakable records of pure, expensive vinylite with pictures of Ken and Tarzan on the records. And best of all, these records are personalized, made just for you, and with a personal message from Ken right on the record. He'll say... Hello there, Dick. This is Ken Maynard with a story just for you. Or he'll say... Hi there, Jack. Or Jim, or... Sally, whatever your name is, Buckaroos, Ken Maynard will call you by name right on the record and then tell you his stories. Exciting? I'll say it's exciting. And all you have to do to have a personalized Ken Maynard record for your very own is send your name and address to records in care of this station and enclose just one dollar bill. And say, you'll play your records over and over again. But send now. Now here's Ken all set to go with a rip-roaring yarn. Well, folks, today I've got a real strange and amazing story to tell you called The Lake of Gold. It was one winter afternoon I was riding across the Borrego Desert in Southern California on my way to the Warner Ranch. Well, sir, it was getting on towards sundown, and I was hunting for a good spot to unpack my bedroll when I saw signs of smoke coming from a camp about a mile away. You know, it's not often you run across anybody out in that desert, so I rode on up to this camp, very glad to see somebody to say howdy to. And that's when I met two of the most interesting men in all my experience. One was named Charlie Marengo, a lawyer in Los Angeles whose hobby was exploring the deserts in his spare time, hunting for lost mines and treasures. But the other fellow was a real character, and the one I want to tell you about. I reckon he must have been about 80 years old, but he was spry and as tough as a young kid you ever saw. He had a grizzled white beard on his chin, but very little on top of his head. His face was about two shades darker than my saddle and lined with wrinkles around his eyes from squinting at the desert sun. And he had a cheerful, sly expression, like he knew a lot more than he was telling. He called himself Borrego Bill. They both gave me a jolly greeting and invited me to stay with them overnight. Well, sir, after supper, we made ourselves comfortable around the fire telling stories as fellows do. And I'd just finished telling about an adventure of mine up in the North Lake country when I was on a fishing trip. When old Bill puckered up his face, took his pipe out of his mouth and said, Mr. Ken, you mentioned lakes that way. It puts me in mind of a lake I heard of once. I remember like it was yesterday, though it was back about 73 when I was a young feller. I worked out of Plasterville, that's east of Sacramento, you know, a long time ago called Hangtown. The big gold rush had passed by, but a lot of fellows were still working over the old diggings. Now, I had a fool notion that if I had tramped around... High enough in the Sierras, I might find the source of all that gold the miners and placer workers took out of the streams and the rivers below. I had a good burrow and plenty of grub, so I set out for the high places and didn't care when I got back. Every mile or so, I'd take samples of the rock, but never saw a sign of color of gold anywhere. My old burrow, I can see him now, just as clear as I see you, Mr. Ken. His name was Nugget, and he was a faithful friend. But Nugget was getting tired... For a burrow, that's unusual. Maybe we was a bit higher than I thought. Anyway, that afternoon we made camp early, about 3 o'clock, and I told Nugget that next morning we'd give up, start back along that long trail to Placerville. We had a good snooze that night. The air was clearer than usual, and the stars were uncommonly bright. 
Poor Bill looked up the stars above our campfire there in Borrego Desert, then continued with his story. You won't believe this, Mr. Ken, he said. But the next morning, Nugget seemed peculiar. He was restless and kept pointing his head toward the North Hill. Seemed like he wanted to go on a few miles further. Nugget was my friend, Burrow Bill said. And if he wanted to go on, I was going with him. We got to the top and looked down. Way below us, ringed around by the pine trees, was a lake. It had been a very dry season and the lake was low. I could see the old shoreline some 50 feet above the water. It was a pretty thing there among the green peaks, and the water was clear and blue. Nugget was drinking his fill of the fresh cold water, and I was filling my canteen. When down through the blue water, I noticed something shining. It was a shimmering golden color. While the mud was black, it looked like there wasn't much mud at all because it was heavy with shiny golden flecks. I'd been around the camps long enough to know gold from pyrite. Now, I tell you, it was true, Mr. Ken, Bill said. The bottom of that lake was solid gold. Well, sir, Mr. Ken, there I was, miles from anywhere, alone with the biggest fortune a man could ever dream of. The problem was what to do about it. Got out my pan and sampled a bit of the lake bottom. After the mud and black sand had washed away, I had a bottle full of the finest leaf gold, the small nuggets I had ever seen. That night and all the next day, I panned all the gold that Nugget and I could carry, just as easy as picking up sand from the seashore. But Nugget was worrying me. He didn't eat much that night and didn't want to get up the next morning. This scared me plenty because Nugget was the only friend I had in the world, and besides, I was counting on him to carry back my gold, food, and water. Without a burr in that wilderness, a man might as well give up before he started. Well, now, I'd say that was a mighty uncomfortable spot for anybody to be in, wouldn't you, friends? But you know, speaking of comfort, if a man doesn't feel good and comfortable, he can't do his best work or enjoy his play. Just for your information, buckaroos, I feel my best when I'm dressed comfortably. And you know my favorite outfit when I'm working or just loafing around? It's my K-shirt and a pair of jeans. And you'd be surprised how many young buckaroos are agreeing with me. Kids all across the country are writing in asking for a K-shirt like mine. I've told you about it before. It's a comfortable cotton shirt made like a T-shirt in the color of desert sand with my own Diamond K brand in bright red on the front and Tarzan and me looking right at you. Now, if you want to join the gang that's wearing my own private K-shirt, all you've got to do is send me your name and address. Tell me what size you wear, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12, and then close a $1 bill for the fellow that makes them. Pretty fancy shirt for just a little $1 bill. And you'll get a lot of wear out of it. Be sure and send me your sizes now. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, or 12. Ask Mom. She'll know what size you wear. Well, now let's get back to Borrego Bill and his story of the Lake of Gold. At least 50 years had gone by since old Bill's adventure, but I could see every detail was as clear as if it had happened yesterday. Bill reached over to take a burning stick from the fire and... Relit his pipe before he continued. Yes, he said it's true about the lake of gold. But there I was, a millionaire, and couldn't buy a penny's worth of help from my best friend. I sat up all night with my burrow nugget, but the next morning he was dead. I never knew what got him. Just wore out, I guess. Anyhow, I gave him as fine a funeral as I could, and I'll bet no burrow ever had a king's ransom in gold buried with him. I looked over at Burr Bill's, he Pausing in his story and his old weather-beaten face was lit up with memories. He went on to tell me that he'd packed as much grub and gold on his back as he could carry. Left his shovel and pick and everything else there with Nugget and started back to Placerville. He said he knew all about these smart fellows that make an accidental gold discovery, go into town, stake their claims, and then can't find their way back again. So old Bill made himself a map and checked every detail, as true as possible, and on the way back, he was sure he could find that lake again blindfolded. It took him about a week to hit Placerville. He staked his claim and round up a fellow he knew for a partner. Pete Winters was his name. Well, Pete didn't believe one word old Burr Bill told him about the lake, but he couldn't disbelieve the gold Bill had. So Pete finally agreed to go. And then the rainy season set in. Yes, sir, mister, old Bill said to me. The storms was as bad as I can remember. Maybe you've heard about that bad winter of 73. Well, no sooner did it let up than the snow was come, and it was no use Pete and me trying to do anything else to spring. I wasn't worried, he said. 
That lake had sat there for a thousand years, and I figured it would wait for me for a few months. We hunted all that spring and went back and hunted all the next. But you know, mister, that lake of gold had plumb disappeared off the face of the earth, near as I could tell. Oh, I reckon it must have been there somewhere, but there's a lot of lakes in that country, and new ones after the rains, and they all look pretty much alike. Besides, the rains had filled them all to the top of my lake with a low water line. just wasn't there anymore. Pete got pretty disgusted. Figured I was trying to hold out on him, and we broke up. Old Bill chuckled again as he thought about it, and then he continued. Well, I never had the heart to go back after that. So after my gold run out, I drifted to one thing and another and finally wound up here in the Borrego Desert. Maybe it's all just as well. But I found that lake of gold again and got rich. I'd probably turn plumb shiftless and took to city living. Anyhow, Mr. Ken, that story is true, and I've got no reason to tell you wrong. Somewhere up in the Sierras is a lake of pure gold. Someday when I get around to it, I'm going back old Nugget. He's going to lead me right to it. Old Bill stopped. I knew that was the end of the story. Without another word, he rolled himself up in his blanket and went to sleep. Morang and I followed suit. As I went to sleep that night, I made up my mind. If ever I was up in the Sierras in the dry season, came across a rusty shovel, some burr bones alongside the mountain lake, I'd be willing to stop a while and do some panning because you never can tell. It might be the lake of gold. Gosh, Ken, that sure was a super story. But you know, when you finish a story, I just keep wishing there was more because I really go for a good Western story. And I'll bet you young buckaroos listening feel a lot like I do. You never get enough of hearing good stories either. And that's why I think if you haven't already ordered your Diamond K record album of exciting Ken Maynard stories, you're losing time. You could be enjoying them. You know, this beautiful color album contains four sides of stories on unbreakable eight-inch records of pure, expensive vinyl light to play on a standard 78 RPM speed phonograph. And don't forget, they're made just for you with a personal message from Ken Maynard, Hollywood's champion of Western stars. Just wait till you hear him say, Hello, George, or Don, or Hazel, or whatever your name is, right on the record. They're personalized just for you. It's the biggest value I know of for just a dollar. Two records in an album, two complete Wild West stories with pictures of Ken and Tarzan on the album and on the records for only a dollar. Just send your name and address to records in care of this station and then close the one dollar bill. Now, if the record album is a gift for someone else, be sure to write the name of the person you want Ken to say hello to and the name and address where you want the album sent. So send a day to records in care of this station. Don't wait any longer to get in on the fun. Now here's Ken to tell you about his next exciting story. Well, closing times rolled around again at the old Diamond K Ranch. This is Ken Maynard and Tarzan. <laughs> saying so long till next time we meet when I'll tell you a story I call Cattle Rustling, Texas Style. In the meantime... Be sure to get your $1 bills in the mail for some real Western fun. You've been listening to Tales from the Diamond K, told by Ken Maynard, internationally famous cowboy, stunt writer, and Hollywood's champion of Western stars. Tales from the Diamond K was transcribed and produced in Hollywood.